I'm Dr. Tala and I've been a neonatologist for 16 years now and the video this week is going to be a quick one. The lovely people at Fisher and Paykel, thank you Kelsey, have lent us their Baby Live, which stands for Lung Inflator Visualizer. So basically using this model, we're going to show you what actually is happening in the baby's lung when the baby is on CPAP versus when the baby is on high flow and how little changes in the prongs or with taking out the pacifier can really make a difference to the pressure that the lungs are actually seeing. Before I go over the model, let me just say a few words about CPAP and high flow nasal cannula. So remember, CPAP has been kind of the gold standard of non-invasive support for like the last couple of decades. And it's been fantastic because we've been able to give babies the support they need without keeping them intubated. So decreasing their BPD, decreasing their chance of pneumonia. More recently, we've started using high flow nasal cannula in places where really we'd previously been using CPAP. So basically kind of younger babies, maybe babies that just got extubated. And there are some advantages of the high flow nasal cannula. So for example, we can feed babies on high flow nasal cannula. Generally, babies are more comfortable on high flow nasal cannula. They're less likely to get a pneumothorax on high flow nasal cannula. But realize high flow nasal cannula provides less pressure and less support to the lungs than CPAP. So ultimately, we do need to make sure that the babies get the support they need. And the model that we're about to show you really kind of shows the differences in the amount of pressures and support that the lung is getting. So I hope you enjoy this. OK, so meet Liv, the lung inflator visualizer. And Live is a, or Baby Live, was based on the, a, the anatomy of a 28-weeker. So what this company, Fisher & Paykel, did was they did a lot of CT scans, looking at the airways of babies who are about 28 weeks, and then basically reconstructed the airway. So here you can see that this is the airway going down to the baby's lung. So this is basically reflecting the baby's lung then depending on what pressures and interface and whatever we're giving to the baby, we can look at the pressure that's being generated in the baby's lung right here. Okay, let's start by doing a trial of bubble CPAP. So here, this is the water. <laughs> it's all gonna fall off. So this is the water supply, basically, that's going to provide the bubbles for the bubble CPAP. And you can see right now, when we don't actually have the mask on the baby, it's not bubbling at all. When you put it on, it actually starts bubbling. So at this point, because the pressure circuit is complete, we actually have bubbling and the baby is receiving its bubble CPAP. So you can see here, right now we have the bubble CPAP set at a water pressure of six. And you can see right here, that we have about between six and seven being generated on this screen, a water pressure of between six and seven. Look how you can see the baby's lungs oscillating a bit. That's because of the bubble CPAP. So now let's watch this uh, baby breathe. So the lungs are going in and out and you can see that the pressure really doesn't change too much significantly, which also really indicates that there isn't a huge increase in the work of breathing in the baby. As you all know, with CPAP, we have a completely closed system. So we don't have um, escape around the nose, even if we do have the prongs in place. Obviously, this is the mask here. And the pressure that the baby is getting is very much dependent on having that closed system. So for example, let's see what happens if we take the pacifier out of the mouth. You can see that the pressure has already significantly fallen. The makers of Baby Live, Fisher and Paykel, do point out though that in a human baby, we also have the tongue and other areas of resistance that aren't going to allow the pressure to fall all the way to one or whatever it is here. But so this is a pretty exaggerated response as we're opening up the system. But just be aware at the bedside that if the mouth is gaping open, or obviously if the mask is really loose, then the CPAP isn't going to work. And we can tell the CPAP isn't working well because immediately you stop seeing the bubbles and you stop hearing the bubbling. If on bubble CPAP you stop hearing the bubbles, by definition, the baby isn't getting the pressure that it needs to be getting. 
Okay, so what we just showed was the baby receiving CPAP through the mask. So you can see that this mask goes on here and then the rest of the CPAP interface goes on like this. So the other thing is, as you all know, sometimes in the unit, we like to alternate the mask with the prongs. And we kind of feel that that gives less pressure at all times to the nares. Um, generally, although we will say that the babies kind of prefer the mask more than the prongs, because when we are putting the prongs in on CPAP, it's very important that the prongs completely obstruct the nares because that's how the pressure is being delivered. So the outer diameter of the prongs for CPAP is going to be very similar to the outer diameter of the nares. The other important thing that you need to know when you're using prongs on CPAP is that we have this interface with the inspiratory limb and the expiratory limb very close to the nares itself. So the importance of that is that with a completely obstructed system, and we can put the baby's pacifier back in, with a completely obstructed system, obviously we need a way for the carbon dioxide to come out as well. So here we have the oxygen coming in and with this expiratory limb, we want the CO2 to be able to go out that way. Since, like I said before, there's really no other mechanism with a completely closed system to actually ventilate or get the CO2 out. Okay, uh, another thing that I want to show you on this is that sometimes we use like a regular nasal cannula interface to actually deliver CPAP by hooking it up to the rest of the CPAP mach machinery. So let me just show you kind of what happens here. And there's two big things that I want to point out. The first one is, is that even as we put the prongs in the nose, and generally remember that these prongs are kind of normally made to have a little bit of leak around them. And we'll talk about that more in a second, about the importance of that when you're giving high flow nasal cannula. But let's then put on the CPAP machine. And again, we are giving uh, the same pressure here. So we're giving a CPAP of six here. So on that, you can see that the CPAP, the pressure that's actually being delivered to the lungs is much lower than that when we're on the prongs. So what if we really try to occlude those prongs further like that? So yes, when we do occlude the prongs kind of as much as we can, then that pressure does go up. But then we run into another problem. And the problem is, is that we are now using this very skinny tubing before we reach the rest of the CPAP interface to not only provide the oxygen, but to actually exhale the CO2. Normally when we're using a nasal cannula, the CO2 is kind of coming out around the leak as well. But here we are now dependent on the ventilation or getting rid of the CO2 through this little tubing. The expiratory tubing is still quite a distance away. So we do worry when we use this kind of cannula setup with a CPAP interface that we are not adequately being able to expire the CO2, even if it's such a tight fit that we are being able to get good CPAP pressures. Right, now let's go over when a baby is on high flow. So this is the high flow nasal cannula. You can see that these prongs are much smaller and these are appropriate size prongs for this baby. So really what a lot of companies say is that the outer diameter of these prongs should be about 50% of the outer diameter of each nair, so much smaller. By definition, we do want a leak on these babies because we want a leak Part of that makes it a lot more comfortable for the babies, but also it's important to be able to actually get the CO2 and to ventilate these babies through by having the leak. So we've got this baby on, this high flow nasal cannula, and right now we are running this at three liters per minute. So you can see that we do have a little bit of pressure given. So the pressure that we've got is like 0.7, so about one, not completely nothing. So just going up on the pressures, uh, sorry, on the flow. So now we're going up to a flow of seven liters per minute. So on a flow of seven liters per minute, we're giving slightly lower pressures. So let's see again if you completely occlude that more then obviously those pressures are going up a lot so that is a very good reminder for you all that 
there is a way and you can see those lungs are like going to explode now just from this high flow so that's just a very good reminder that if you do end up really occluding the nares with these prongs you are going to deliver very high pressures and it's going to take away from what we're trying to do which is comfortably give the support without creating barrow or volume trauma to these babies so yes some pressure is given but it's also dependent on exactly how occluded those nares are so again, let's take out the pacifier and that pressure falls down considerably.